Uh, okay, so that's it for transport layer. <laughs> TCP and UDP. Okay, going down, next layer down, the network layer. Okay, this is the, you know, this is the one that routers care about. This is what tells the routers how to get the packets through the network. <coughs> and it's crucial from that point of view. Uh, so it's the big thing for routers. Uh, we have this so you know interconnected mesh of routers. So how do they decide where to send the packets? You know, how does all that stuff happen? Uh, this network layer, as we said, is is, uh, is called is said to be best effort. Okay, just tries to get your packet there. If it gets there, fine. If it doesn't, you have to worry about it somewhere else, like transport layer or application layer. But it doesn't happen here. Uh, okay, so the protocol here is IP, is known as IP. Uh, every router, every host, everybody does IP, okay? Because this is, you know, kind of the uh, basic level we have to be at, you know, to, to do stuff on the network. Um, routers, so, so there's other things <coughs> that routers have to worry about, like routing packets, okay? Uh, and they, so the routing <coughs> protocols, right, things like RIP and OSPF and BGP and all those things are really interesting but we're not going to talk about them, okay, because they're not really much uh, security stuff that happens there. Okay, so IP is kind of the thing we want to talk a little bit about. Um, okay, at the IP layer, okay, at the network layer, we've got an IP address. Okay, the IP addresses that are used today are 32 bits. Okay, so 32 bits, how many IP addresses does, does that give us? 2 to the 32. 2 to the 32, which is? About 4 billion. Okay, four, that's a lot, right? You know, that's well, almost enough for one billion people on this planet. Well, okay, we have to share. A couple of us have to share. I'll have okay. twelve computers each. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <coughs> that's right. Okay, so four billion. It's actually even less than four billion because it's sort of hierarchical the way it's built up. So as a practical matter, there's not even close to four billion that you can use. Um, I think officially we've run out of IP addresses. It happened, you know, a month ago or so, something like that. Officially we ran out. <laughs> so. So there's always a shortage of IP addresses, okay? Uh, and we'll look at that. That actually creates some interesting uh, problems. Now, uh, the IP addresses, 32 bits, are always given in uh, so-called dotted decimal notation. So there's four bytes. That's really all that's going on here, but they give it in decimal, right? Each of the four bytes is given as a decimal number between 0 and 255. Now, for most people, in most applications, your IP address can change. So you get on the network, you're given an IP address for that uh, interaction. Get on later, it's a different IP address. That's in most cases. Um, okay, now the 32-bit IP address. Uh, so there's this analogy, right? Um, I don't know if I skipped it or what. But if you take any networking class, right, they'll tell you, okay, your IP address, that's like your home address, right? Okay, now you could move and live in a different house and your home address would change, right? So it can change, okay? But there's this other thing called, oh, we'll get to that. The MAC address, which is sort of the physical address of your computer, and that's like, that's like what? We know it's hardwired. <coughs> that's like your social security number. No matter where you move, your social security number goes with it. Okay, so we'll get to that in a minute. Um, okay, so we've got this 32-bit IP address, which identifies me as a host on the network, right? So if anybody wants to send a packet to me, that's my address on the network. However, I could have several things going at once, right? I could be doing, I could be browsing the web. I could be sending email, I could be FTPing, I could be doing all sorts of different applications at the same time. When a packet shows up, how does my computer know which application that packet belongs to? Right? It just came to my IP address. Which application does it belong to? So to keep the application straight, uh, we also have the concept of a port number, okay? these 16-bit port numbers. Okay, Now, the numbers uh, less than 1,024 are said to be well-known uh, by somebody. Okay, They're well-known, uh, and they're assigned to particular, uh, particular protocols. For example, HTTP is assigned port 80. Uh, POP3 is port 110, SMTP we saw is port 25, and so on and so forth. Uh, the port numbers above 1,025 are just assigned dynamically as, as needed, okay, as you create uh, various applications. So the IP address and the port number together are set to define a socket. And the socket uniquely, uniquely identifies the application on the network. 
Okay, the address tells it where, and the port number tells it which particular application. Okay, so you're unique uh, on the network, uh, internet wide. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, network address transmission. Okay, so uh, this is an issue uh, that comes up because of the shortage of IP addresses. Okay, you never have enough IP addresses. So how can you stretch the number of IP addresses to make, uh, essentially the goal here is to make one IP address usable by lots of different people. <laughs> okay, so we can ex effectively extend the number of uh, IP addresses that are available. Okay, so how can we do that? Well, you can have, a, a, it could either be a, a, it could be a firewall or a router, whatever, sort of the gateway, you know, the exit out of your local network. Excuse me. And this guy's gonna translate, okay? He's gonna have, you're gonna use locally inside your network, you're gonna use just bogus IP addresses that you can use locally, but those never go out on the network. When you go out on the internet, you're, your router or firewall is going to translate to a real IP address that can go out on the network and then translate back to the internal addresses when it comes back. And we'll see exactly how that works here in a second. But before we do that, let's look at a NAT-less example. Okay, this is without NAT. This is sort of how, it would, how it's supposed to work, <laughs> right? Um, okay, so if Alice is... Um, uh, doing something here, let's say uh, web browsing, uh, and she wants to go to this particular address, she would create a packet, and as the source, it would be her, right, because she's the source of this packet. So it's her IP address, and after the colon here, this is the uh, 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 port number. Yeah, so socket, okay, we're defining a socket here, right? Okay, so IP address, port number, socket is the, is the thing as a whole. Okay, and the destination is this guy right here, okay? Now when it comes back, what's the source? Yeah, it's this guy right here, right? What was the destination and what's the destination? That was the source, okay. You got it? Okay. So you send it back, it just gets reversed, source and destination. Okay, so that's the way it's supposed to work. Everybody's got their IP address, right? You just say which socket it is, you know, which... Uh, port number it is, and you create the socket, and there you go. Okay, the idea with NAT is, you know, we have a big network back here, we have lots of users, we don't all have our own IP address, we just don't have enough available. So how can we make one IP address work for everybody on our local network, or for lots of people on our local network? Here's the idea. So Alice, who has her local IP address, which works fine locally, but she better not use it on the internet because it's not supposed to go there. Okay, it doesn't work on the internet. So she creates a packet. She wants to do the same thing, right? She wants to browse the web, go to this particular uh, web server. Now the firewall is <coughs> going to see that. It's going to say, okay, you know, I've got to put a legitimate IP address here for the uh, for the web server to respond to. So it's going to take its own IP address. Right, and substitute that in as the source. And it's going to create a, uh, uh, why can I not remember what this one? Port number. Okay. It's going to create a port number, port 4000, just make one up, okay? Not one of the well known guys, one of the other guys, about 1024, and put that in. Okay, now this guy, he thinks it came from here, right? That's what he thinks, and that's what he's going to respond to. So when he responds, <coughs> what does the firewall do? It looks up, right? It looks yeah. up and says, oh, I've got this table here of all the packets I've sent out you know, recently, and 4,000, oh, that corresponds to this address. So when it sees port 4,000, it just translate that into a local uh, IP address that works uh, internally here. I don't know why it turns pink, but it does. And then it comes back and it gets to, uh, gets to Alice. Okay. Okay, so you got the idea? You could use one legitimate IP address and a lot of people could share it. Yeah. So does it remove that entry from the table after the transaction is complete? Like, does it do it over? Well, um... Because if you... Yeah, I mean, I mean, probably never would happen, but if you had more than 2 to the 16 kilobytes uh, firewall, then you... Get 2 to the 16 minus 1,024, right? So, oh, yeah. uh... Well, pl well any, and every port, if you add up all the ports that all the users find in firewall needed, then... That's right. That's right. I mean, you could have multiple things going on per user, right? 
Uh, I mean, it's a legitimate question. I, I don't know exactly how you deal with that. It's just a timeout or what. Look, it has to survive for the connection, right? So it has to be there for a little while. Looks like you could stack these. There could be many layers of that between source and destination. Uh, there could be, yeah, conceivably, yeah. Um, and, you know, you don't typically, typically you wouldn't just have a single IP address <coughs> here, right? You'd have a couple, you know, a few that you could use. So, you know, running out, you know, it's probably not. It, you could manage that, right? So. Uh, okay, got the picture. Okay, now why is this of any interest security-wise? Why do people care about that? Uh, well, here we go. Okay, okay, so first of all, what's the advantage? Why do you do this? What's the point? Yeah, so I mean, there's a shortage of IP addresses, so it allows us to extend the number of IP addresses effectively. So that's good, I guess. Uh, so just one IP address can be used by many. Okay, so what's a disadvantage? Any disadvantage of doing this? It's hard to uniquely tell. I mean, multiple users behind that look like they're all the same as a restaurant. Is that good or bad? I mean, it, it, could be, it could be good, right? I mean, if Trudy's trying to watch and see who's communicating back there, you know, out on the network, they all look the same. There's a whole bunch of them. She knows which network it is, but she doesn't know individually who it is. So maybe that could be good. But why might that be bad as well? They might have different security levels. Uh, could be, okay. Too and much performance issue. Uh, performance issue? How so? Okay, right. I mean, if you're translating for lots of users and you're also trying to be a firewall and lots of other things, yeah, that could be a really a major burden. Um, okay, another thing that people uh, often complain about, security people at least, is that if you're using NAT, it makes it really difficult, if not impossible, to do end-to-end -end security. So really from host to host, you know, ideally you would like to secure the transaction from host to host. Well, if you encrypt the data and send it out from Alice, you know, the, the firewall is probably not going to be able to deal with that, right? So you don't usually do that. What you do is you have the firewall encrypt. And so the firewall does the encryption for you from that point on. So on your local network, it's sort of wide open, but out on the internet, you protect it. Okay, maybe it would be better to do it end to end, right? uh, keep it secure from end to end. Uh, and that's an issue with IPsec that we'll see when we discuss.